Does the movie Woman King portray men accurately? As many gentlemen know by now, Hollywood is not exactly a friend of masculinity. Showing a movie where men are truly men is considered the other M word that ends in ogeny these days. The agenda in the entertainment industry is to show all men to be soft and weak, goofy and easy to delete. Movies love showing women doing very harmful things to men and even switching roles to confuse the gullible public. Can men trust that this movie, Woman King, produced by modern womanists, portrays them accurately in history? Should we even care? Is it time for more manly men to team up to produce our own historically accurate movies that uphold true family values and how men anchor society? Don't forget to like, share, and subscribe so we can keep this new channel growing. The title, Woman King, alone tells you everything you need to know about the obvious agenda. That's how Hollywood does it. Not to knock this specific movie, but to point out a general pattern in Western entertainment industry. To most unsuspecting people, the Woman King title is just mere words. But to those who are astute about psychological operations, clearly this is a role reversal strategy implying that women, women can become kings and conquer men. On another psychological level, the modern womanist agenda in the media has been encouraging sisters to be hostile towards brothers for decades. Curiously, the history supposedly behind this movie is actually quite sketchy and should raise some question as to what is real versus fantasy. This is why it is important for men to create their own entertainment to counter the dishonest Hollywood agenda. But I digress. In the past, one of the most notable anti-brother movies was Color Purple, directed and produced by legendary Hollywood mogul Steven Spielberg, who of course is not a brother. For those too young to remember, that movie was a huge hit back then, won every award and took aim at making black men seem like out of control monsters seeking every opportunity to ravage sisters. And bucking, hitting it right there, bust my eye, bust my lip. All my life I had to fight. I had to fight my daddy, I had to fight my uncles. I had to fight my brothers. Girl, child ain't safe in the family means. But I ain't never thought I had to fight in my own house. I love Hoppo. God knows I do. But I kill him dead for I let him be. It came out during the rise of the modern womanist talk shows led by famed celebrities like Oprah Winfrey, who actually starred in Color Purple. You see how that works? See how Hollywood works? It's a 360 degree propaganda machine, and it destroyed the image of brothers. Other movies like What's Love Got to Do With It, which later proved to be based on a lot of lies, y'all didn't know that probably, and Waiting to Exhale further took jabs at the image of black men that was one-sided. Mainstream media backed this up as part of its overall modern womanist agenda against men. So, it should come as no surprise that this latest in that long list of anti-brother movies yet again takes a big shot at the image of black men, pitting sisters against brothers in typical Hollywood divide and conquer fashion. It is no different than those slandering newspapers 120 years ago that falsely accused brothers of doing harmful things to white women that got us deleted on trees. Strange fruit should come to mind for those who know that expression about what kind of human fruit was hanging from trees then. Just for disclosure, I have not seen the movie nor will I share my resources with Hollywood for it. But trusted people I know have seen it and I trust their feedback. Again, the movie title and trailer already expose their agenda. Movies like this thrive on controversy, so this video I'm doing now is the only minor help they'll get from me from that angle. I don't even have to address the historical accuracy of, of the Dahomey tribe, as that's not really the full angle of this video. I'll touch on it a little bit, but not fully. 
I've seen quite a few social media posts and comments where the majority of sisters love this movie. Even when brothers and, and a few smart sisters brought up many anti-brother and historical problems of the movie, the die-hard sisterhood, those queens, still dismissed them and fully embraced the movie. I think we, know, we all know exactly why. Any movie that shows strong, independent, violent, I don't need a man, women in position of ultimate power as kings and warriors taps into the conditioned masculine mind of many of today's women. It reinforces their fantasies of themselves as being over men, keeping men in check, and using any physical means to aggressively put brothers down by force. Here's a quote from a very slanted, embellished article titled, When Africa was a matriarchy ruled by African queens, it flourished. When it became a patriarchy, a patriarchy it was destroyed. <laughs> from the AfricaAmerican.org website. Quote, Dohemian female army of 1841. Dahomey was a healthy or wealthy West African empire. The elements of Dahomey's success were, it, were its trade and its powerful army, whose soldiers were considered invincible. You know what they're talking about. Let me continue. The fierce and mighty Bahanzan Bawel was the king of this great empire. His army contained 25,000 warriors, 5,000 of which were women. Here we go. The women were the most respected and feared part of Bahanzan's army. They ranked above the men. <laughs> oh boy. These women were thoroughly trained and kept trimmed by a system of gymnastics developed by the Dahomeans themselves. Recruited from among the healthiest and strongest virgins in Dahomey, these females were sworn to chastity. The king sometimes picked his wives from among them or gave them to his bravest warriors, <laughs> whatever. The training of these women was very rigorous. One of their drills was charging three times barefoot into a construction of thorns, nude to their waist. Another exercise was to kill a maddened bull with their bare hands. Ooh, <laughs> just making it up. Continue, all right. Perfect was the discipline of these female warriors. They fought with extreme bravery. Excited by their own courage and undying energy, the women, like the men, were thought to be invincible. Unquote. <sighs> Why, people? Why? Why? This is the kinds of so-called history that the woman king is based on. Notice it said out of an army of 25,000, the 5,000 women were ranked above men and were the most feared. <laughs> do you really believe that? When, 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 when did they do that? When did they do that? When, when in history have they done that? So not even one of the 20,000 men was stronger or more feared than any of the 5,000 women? Are you kidding me? And what king or elite warrior ever picked masculine warriors as wives in all of history? Even when it discussed the so-called women warriors of Dahomey, Getty.edu, the website, started the paragraph by saying, quote, from legendary origins, unquote, implying that their story is unverified, perhaps based on oral tradition or not. All of the sources that predate the making of this movie are not as certain and concrete on this history, something the movie, of course, won't face head on. Do we even know how historically accurate this movie really is? The movie is the kind of fantasy-based projection that modern women want to paint to rewrite history in a dangerous Orwellian way in order to reimagine themselves as able to be women and men at the same time. This fits into the Hollywood agenda or gender-bending agenda very well but paints sisters as rough-looking masculine women. In my opinion, this is the wrong message sisters should be sending to brothers if they truly want to have a reconciliation. No man, let me repeat, no doggone man wants a doggone masculine, fierce, tough, independent woman as a wife, girlfriend, or anything. It's not attractive. Hollywood does not have the best interests of marriage and families at heart, especially black families. So this woman worship of this movie, which was created by a group of white feminists, curiously, 
including the racially ambiguous one. She looks, <laughs> she was born in a white culture, basically, even though she has a little bit of black in her, supposedly. It's counterintuitive to what's best for the future of black marriage. One of the white female producers of this movie is actually a leading board member of a gender-bending organization at USC in LA, Big Time University, home to the well-known film school that Hollywood goes to for its future producers and directors. Hopefully, hopefully, this bizarre, baffling movie <laughs> will disappear after getting a few dollars from strong, independent queens out there. Yet perhaps, perhaps, on a positive note, the reality of the decline of the family unit will hit these same women, hopefully. Time will tell. Let's support brothers and sisters who have their own film studios who can tell similar stories, but from a source of truth and accuracy without the anti-family agenda. And for all the other racial groups out there, all the other you know, non-blacks out there, the puppet masters use their agenda on the black community first then unleashes it on other racial groups, which is why we're seeing other families now declining in the West. So y'all should be paying attention and raising your voices against Hollyweird as well. Don't forget to like, share, and subscribe so we can keep this new channel growing. Until women stop looking to Hollywood to turn women into kings and fierce warriors, the apocalypse of good men will continue. Welcome to the Brother Apocalypse.